Hey guys, it's Quickie Baby, and I'm going to be showing you this 110 replay, and then I will be showing you the replay which got the highest amount of experience in any heavy tank that I received. So, before we take a look at the winner of the heavy bracket, we're looking at Kez here. Kez, I don't know. All these names. Kez, we're going to call you Kez, because that sounds badass. So Kez is a very decent player. He's in a lovely matchup here, where he's against only five tier 8 enemy tanks, the rest being tier 7, but we're going to see how Kehaz carries this game. Now he's playing the 110, and he is using the 100mm on the 110, which gets fantastic penetration with his regular rounds. Look at that, 215mm of penetration, 320 alpha damage. I really want to get this 110, considering that I've just recently played the 112, the premium tank. I'm starting to build up a crew, and I really want to have a very decent heavy tank, and I think the 110 could be it. The pike on the front of this tank is frankly incredible. It can bounce most shells frontally, apart from tanks with, say, 225mm plus that are aimed at its lower plate when you're not angling. But of course, when you angle this tank, you open up lots of opportunities to be hit at all angles. So let's just see how the armor of this 110 holds up. He puts in a nice shot there into the Tiger. Now you see he's pulling back and just stays forwards. This is the perfect opportunity to see the 110. I don't know where that shot went. That was an air ball. Jeez Louise, that one sucked. Whoa, he just ricocheted off the droid. This is a bit of a bad start, but thankfully Kehaz has not taken any damage due to the fantastic armor on the front of the 110. And there we go, he clutches one in finally against the KV-5's droid. And it looks like every enemy tank is trying to shoot him here. Just unable to. And now he even goes and hides his lower plate on this little mound. This KV-5 decides, okay. I am ineffective against him frontally, but then somehow decides to stop and shoot him frontally anyway, so I don't know why he did that, but whatever. Okay, so now the KV-5 is getting the right idea. Let's flank. Kehaz is still trying to hide his lower plate. The KV-5 makes a complete meal of this and for some reason stops trying to flank him and just sits there trying to penetrate him. Finally one goes into him, but he takes out the KV-5. He did all of that KV-5, 100% of that KV-5, absolutely murdered him. And let's take a look to see where the only penetrating shot has gone in against him. Looks like it was the Capola, guys. Yep, there's our Capola penetration. So now k Hairs is absolutely rocking it. He's going after that tier 7 medium, the KV-13. Already having done 3,100 damage this game. For some reason the KV-13 was looking at the Tiger. I don't know what that KV-13 was thinking. I think he's just having a very bad day. He's like, what can I do to this guy? I'll just shoot at his thickest part of his armor. And fails horribly. So wow, the more I see this tank, the more I really want to get it, because frontally this thing is an absolute behemoth. And having that 100mm means that you're able to really put in some clutch shots. There we go. None of this derpy accuracy with the 122. Sniping the sides of these Tigers, taking out one. Tiger's completely tunnel visioning here to the fact that they've got two tier 8 tanks shooting them in the side. Kehez is on a rampage. I really want to get one of these 110s now. I think I said that a few times this video. <laughs> This looks awesome. I can't believe I haven't picked one up. The Indian Panzer takes out the Tiger. But then gets taken out by a Panther 2. 
And guys, the Panther 2 is the best player on the enemy team. He's picked up five kills. And K. Hairs has also got to deal with an SU-152. So his team just all died, so it's him versus four opponents. Make that three as he takes out the SU-152. The Panther comes around the corner and puts a good shot into him. K. Hairs is not letting him escape, and that Panther 2 is in a lot of trouble now. Bouncing another shell off him. K. Hairs is playing it perfectly here, really. Stopping the Panther 2 from escaping and just bullying him, taking out their best player and denying him the top gun. Great work there. Perfect play in the 110, bullying that medium tank, taking him out quickly, as we can see that the enemy are now already in the cap circle. So they were trying to get there to help that Yag Panther 2 out, trying to turn it into a 2v1 rather than a one-on-one. -on -one. And that's why when you are, when you have these kind of situations at the end of the game where you're against multiple opponents, it's very important that you, um, you try and take them out as aggressively as possible until you can control the engagement. So K. Hairs comes around the corner here, aiming at the plate of the IS-3 and puts in a great shot. Knowing that he will reload before the IS-3 does, he keeps aiming. The IS is trying to cap still. He sees this and he goes for an opportunity to shoot him. That one bounced, but you've got to love the accuracy on this gun. Just bouncing the IS shells with ease. That one didn't bounce. Okay, k -Hairs is starting to fire some premium shells. And with the premium, this tank has got 265 millimeters of penetration. That's massive. But you know what? I would be firing my premium shells in this situation as well. Finally, the IS-3 manages to penetrate him. There we can see that the lower plate is not that strong at range against tanks with high penetration like the IS-3. You can also see that when, you, when the armor is angled, that it's quite easy to um, penetrate here as well. A bit like an IS-7. This armor is remarkably like an IS-7, actually. So let's see how k -Hairs deals with this situation. He's on five kills. He wants his top gun. But more importantly, he wants to finish carrying this game completely man mode like he has done already. So he must be thinking, okay, the IS is camping behind that building. He's looking for the IS-3. The IS pokes out a little bit. Oh, no, he doesn't. God, perfect opportunity for an ambush. Oh, no, it totally donks. What the hell? The gunner is drunk on rice wine. But he fires in there. Even though he couldn't see the IS-3, but oh my god, tunnel vision! Uh-oh. Okay, he turns his arm around. Misses his shot. Oh, he's starting to donk. Oh, the IS-3 donks as well! Oh no, what's going on? This is not World of Tanks. Puts in his last premium shell into the IS-3 who misses his opportunity to shoot him. Okay, the IS has finally figured out that he needs to help. So the IS is coming, but he's already taken out the other guy. Oh, he wrecks his engine. Oh, it's close now. But finishes it off the clutch shot. Oh, that was crazy. Oh, my word. I have no idea. The IS finally figured out what he needed to do. So the IS-3 came round and flanked him. And then the IS went, herp derp Maybe I need to go and flank him. <laughs> Help out my friend. It's not like I'm going to be able to cap. <laughs> oh, man, that was a ridiculous game. Let's just take a look at some post-game stats. So here we go. That is that replay by k -Hairs. And wow, just, just again, just to recap, that IS should definitely have been quicker to do what he eventually did. He got the right idea in the end, but he just didn't do it quick enough. And if he had, then he would have been able to win the game. k has really showcased a, a pretty large carry here. We can see that he was able to get 2,070 experience. Non-premium, non-double, which is just huge, especially for a tier 8 tank. The top damage on the rest of his team was 1,700. This was simply a massive carry. And he took 5,400 potential damage before he went down. He didn't get any superhero medals, so to say. But still, this was a fantastic result, carrying a game in style using the strengths of his tank and remaining fairly cool in a stressful situation at the end, knowing exactly what he needed to do.
After seeing this replay, it really makes me want to get a 110. This looks like this is a fantastic tank. Healthy amount of alpha damage, really good rate of fire, really punchy gun, massively punchy gun if you fire the premium shells, which would quite easily be able to penetrate any tier 10 tank frontally. Troll armor against these tiers and lower. Looks like a one to keep. Anyway, thank you so much, K Hairs. I was so impressed by your replay that I had to show it. But now, guys, I'm going to present to you something which I think will be very, very, very controversial. But this was the highest experience game coming up that I received in my replay competition. And, you know, that's what my rules were. I'm going to go with it. So, guys, here we go. We're watching Paolo Massa, who is the second quickie baby replay competition heavy tank winner for getting the most experience that i received he's playing on redshire on the fairly new encounter game and again this is an amazing game very similar to the prokhorovka when you consider that there are only really tier 7 heavy tanks on the enemy team so i'm just going to fast forward a little bit so that we can get into position because it does take him quite a while to get there we can see that the game is developing with a lot of tanks along the central ridge and a lot of tanks coming over here towards the south. So Paolo Massa is now deciding, okay, I'm going to flank. And one thing I will highlight is that this looks like a, a fairly ordinary game. A lot of the people in the replays that you've seen so far have been crazy, crazy, crazy exceptional players. And now, I'm not saying that Paolo Massa isn't, but I'm saying he's more of a person who's on the up and he's definitely growing. And if he keeps putting in replays like this, he'll definitely get there. Okay, so this KV-3 is YOLOing towards the uh, cap to try and contest it, which is a good thing to do. It's good to try and contest the cap on Redshire Encounter. Paolo is already loading his premium shells. Why he's doing that, I'm not entirely sure. Maybe he wants to do some damage at the start of the game because he feels that he might get taken out quickly. Maybe he has a set amount. Maybe he has a set amount of premium shells that he just decides to fire and then secure himself some damage in the game. And then after that, then he just moves along. Still, these 245 millimeter penetration shells are are ripping apart these tier 7 heavies at range oh wow look he's got the eagle eye is that eagle eye or I think that's eagle eye which tells you what module damage you've done to the enemy tanks I've never used that before so we can see there that the KV-3 is got track damage he decides to change to shoot the tiger and that shot I have to admit was quite poorly aimed did not have the reticule over the center of the tank. That was better. Securing the kill on the tiger. Getting his first blood. And as you can see, his team are wilting hard here. Look at all of his team who have died in the cap circle. All those guys. That's pretty brutal. He's got a few people chilling out on top of the hill. And this looks like a very strong location for a T-29. I'm not sure how many games you get like this, but we can see, wow, look at that. His radio man is dead. Oh no, his radio is broken. His radio man is knocked out or dead. This guy's amaracked and burning. Wow, I've never seen this, um, never seen this, this commander skill before. I think it's a commander skill. That's how much I know about it, really. Looks like it could be quite fairly useful. But whether you forego, say like, uh, one of the other skills on that crew member is another question. So wow, Paolo Massa here has already done 2,800 damage. He's fired all of his premium shells. Maybe he accidentally loaded them. I'm not sure. I'm fairly sure that was an accident because there was no real reason to be firing those premium shells that early in the game. Especially when later on you might need them to secure clutch, it, clutch situations where you're maybe one against three or one against five as we've seen in previous replays. Oh dear, he knocked out the barrel there. Doesn't look like he's got sixth sense because he's without a shadow of a doubt spotted here by the KV-3. Ricochet. 
He's aiming here at the corner of the KV3. Now he's aiming at the mid plate, which isn't a bad shot, I guess. But still, he's aiming in the wrong place. So he was aiming at the um, the corner of the KV3 that he needed to be aiming at at the, the, the middle front plate. He's still doing a really good job. Aiming here at the IS. Wasn't a bad shot. Been unlucky there that his 105 didn't go into the right place. He pulls back. He's using his T29 exactly how you meant to use it. Hold down. Just ripping and tearing through the enemy. And really, the enemy are giving him more than enough opportunity to rip and tear through them. He fires a blind shot there. Great. That was that was great play. Really good play there to fire that blind shot at that Yag Panther and take him out. Securing his fourth kill and definitely securing him over 3,000 damage in this game. So he's still firing blind. Hopefully trying to catch the Tiger P that was last spotted there. Sorry, make that a T29. We can see the T29 has relocated. So he's still got a fair few tier 7 heavy tanks all surrounding the enemy. The enemy are definitely out positioned, I feel, here. Having people up on the, the ridge line above him on his right and also on the hill in the middle. And a Tiger P progressing down the, the center reservation. I just really think that they're out positioning the enemy here. and But it's still a very close game. Because as you can see, they just lost their middle man. They just lost the Tiger P. So now, now his team, now Paolo's team are, are divided onto two flanks. Puts in another great shot there against the IS. You've got to love the 105mm on this T29. Firing in blind there. I like it against the IS as well. The Tiger is spotted, but he's behind the ridge. But that IS is certainly not behind the ridge. The one on the left I'm talking about here, not the one that he's aiming at currently. He fires in another blind shot. He's trying to make them all happen. So now Paolo's thinking, okay, I can try and poke up here, use this ridge line to try and find the IS who I know is below me. And he gets spotted for the first time. Okay, he does have six cents. I have no idea how he has not been spotted until now. Um, wow, how does that happen? Maybe the KV-3 had a dead commander or his viewports were down or maybe he's got a 50% crew. I have no idea how he was not spotted until now. That's incredible. That was a really nice leading shot there on the IS. He's definitely working it. He wants this game. And now the enemy have only got three heavy tanks left. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Good shot there against the uh, Tiger P. Now the Tiger thinks, okay, I've got to do something. There's only 19, ge 19 seconds until the game is lost. Paolo changes his position so that he has enough gun depression. And this is just a dream here. Oh man, look at that burning tiger. Oh god, the flames look epic in these. I don't usually have the um I don't usually have the the extra effects on, but the flames on the tiger looked incredible there. Fortunately he missed the the extra shot on the tiger, but still put a good one into him. With that burning. Now he's going to start to accelerate his damage done this game. Over 5,000 now. Working this IS in the flank. Really bad shot that. No excuses. Needs to hit those kind of shots on the broad side of an IS. Another bad shot there. Come on, Mr. Paolo. You can aim better than this. You've shown us a, a great replay so far. Finish it off in style. Good. Well done, well secured. So guys, let's take a look at some post-game stats. So here we have it, the highest experience game that I got out of any of you guys in a T29. Paolo got patrol duty, which I think might be about to tell you why he got so much experience, as well as a confederate medal and five kills. So Paolo did 6,247 damage, which was very impressive, but what he did, which was amazing, 
As well, the added to his score was a 3,700 spotting damage, securing the patrol duty medal. That kind of spotting damage would give any kind of a, a scout tank a good game. The fact that he was also able to do 6,200 damage was what made this just a, a super game, really. Looking at the detailed report, we can see that he got 2,388 experience, non-premium, non-double, non-event. That is just absolutely huge. And with the premium account, that gives 3,583 experience. That's more than I've ever been able to get, even when I was using the VK2801, when it was overpowered with the 105 and premium rounds. I won't take anything away from this replay. Paolo definitely carried the game, and if he hadn't been in that position in shooting, there's no doubt that his team would have lost. However, what I would like to clarify is, even though this replay got the most experience, I would not say it was the most skilled replay, not by a long shot. Really, Paolo Massa managed to get himself into a very good situation. Some somehow was able to spot all of the enemy tanks without even being spotted himself and just unload on them all the time. It was absolutely crazy. He got an amazing matchup where there were basically a hell of a lot of enemy heavy tanks which have got a lot of experience compared to tank destroyers at tier 7 and medium tanks and light tanks as an example or even artillery and he basically secured the game. Now one of the reasons why I've done this replay competition is to try and see what specific tanks really get huge experience games and what kind of conditions you have to be in to really get your big game. So what we might take from this is A, it seems like the optimum tank to get high experience games in is going to be tier 7. B, there has to be a large amount of health points on the enemy team. We're talking like tier 7 heavies basically. They have a huge amount of extra health compared to the tier 6s and because of that they yield a lot of experience. Also, the tier 7s really mark, in my opinion, where the tree takes a huge step up and your armor actually does count for something. All of the replays that we have seen have been massive because literally their armor outmatches most of the enemy's guns. All of these games were games of opportunity, especially the one that we saw at the end. But still, I'm not going to take anything away from any of them. In my opinion, there is not even a shadow of a doubt that all of these games would have been lost without the heroics of all the people who participated in them. And that sort of justifies the achievements of all of these players. Now, Paolo Massa, I'd like to congratulate you for getting the most experience that anyone submitted. And I'll be sending you your winning prize of 5,500 gold on the EU. So guys, this replay competition isn't over. I've still got a hell of a lot of exciting replays. Got medium tanks, tank destroyers, artillery and light tanks still to come. So I hope you've enjoyed the heavy tanks section. There's definitely more exciting replays to come. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider rating it down below. I'd really appreciate it. And just thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.